Father God, we just thank you right now. We just bless you for coming into this place, Father God. You have already validated that you are with us at this moment, God. Hallelujah. So there's no need for the formality of saying so and so and this and that, God. But we pray right now that you remove every distraction and allow us to focus on you, Father God. The hearts are already tender. The atmosphere is set for a breakthrough. The atmosphere is set for an epiphany. The atmosphere is for healing, for deliverance in the name of Jesus, Father God. Oh, Lord, and we are anxious because we anticipate another level to happen, even though we're seated in a hot place right now, Father God. We know there's no limitations to where you can take us in your spirit. Hallelujah. If we just hold on tight, God, and we're holding on tight. If we just patiently wait, and we're patiently waiting to hear what thus saith the Lord, God. Hallelujah. So open our eyes that we behold the wondrous things within your law. Open our ears so that we can hear what the Spirit of God has chosen to speak to us today and open our hearts so that the seed of the word that is sown today finds good ground hey, takes root, Father God, and brings about fruit in due season that it will be profitable for those who need it in such a time as this. And I'll hide me behind the cross and speak through lips of clay. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. These things we pray in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Um, as Pastor Janelle already bear witness to, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited about God. Amen. Amen. And I'm excited Amen. because he's a promise keeper. Yes. And he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen. Yes. And um, our focus, our word for 2019, God told us, is to jump. Yes. yes. To jump. Yes. That leap of faith. Yes. Trusting him. Yes. Relying on him whenever there's a gap that seems too great for us to cross he says jump yes. and we talked last week we under we we came up with some good acronyms just to remember to make us jump so we said j-u-m-p to jump and some of the acronym acronyms was jesus understands my problems so i can jump jesus understands my potential so i can jump jesus understands my pain so i can still jump yes. our focal text was if you need joy leap for it yes. a lot of times we jump when we have joy right. that's not what the scripture says right. you're supposed to jump hey before yeah. you get the joy yeah. <laughs> and in the process of jumping yeah. that's where god catches you and he lifts you and he takes you to where the joy resides Amen. so Amen. we want to continue to jump in 2019, 2020, 2030, 2040, however long God graces us Amen. to be yes. in this place until we jump into his arms into eternity. Amen. 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 And in doing so, we have to constantly maintenance our relationships with him and where we are in life. And today I want to help some of those who want to jump got the word and you bent your knees and you started to think about jumping and there was still a little bit of a hang up. Mm -hmm. So we're going we're gonna to keep dealing with that because if you can't jump yet, we have to reevaluate what's keeping you stuck. So our focal text is found in the book of Acts. Now, y'all can turn there if you desire to do so. I'm not reading the focal text today in a traditional manner because it's the whole chapter, the whole 27th chapter of the book of Acts and the first verse of chapter 29, I mean 28. So you have 27, the whole thing, and then chapter 28, the first verse. And, but I'm going to help you along the way by giving you the abridged version, the Thompsonized version. I, I, I used to say, um, I can't even use like the, the Thompson Bible because there's actually a Thompson Bible. Right. I dare somebody to use my last name. <laughs> I talked to that fellow. But, um, <laughs> but 
I wanted to pretty much tell you what's going down in um, the 27th chapter, and I'll reach back and grab some scripture just so y'all can know that I do study the word, and there's Bible to go along with this. But if you're taking notes, I want you to write for the title of whew, the message is Walking Away from the Wreck. Walking Away from the Wreck. Amen? Amen. So, um, have you ever been to a place in your life where you just felt like everything was in shambles? Yes. Everything just in shambles. You Maybe you didn't wear it on the outside. You had a mask on, but you find yourself alone in a room crying because of the mess you managed to get yourself into. Yeah. Am I talking to anybody yeah. in here today? Yeah. Did you um find yourself unable to recover from the results of your poor decisions that you may have made in the past? Yeah. Um, you may have even reached the point where you believe that the tragedy that you call your life is unsalvageable. You ever felt that way? Yeah. You, you, you ever been there yeah. before? I mean, and let's be honest, when we're left to our own vices, uh -huh. our own abilities, uh -huh. our own methods and our practices, yeah. we can do a great job of making a total mess yes. of yeah. our lives. Amen? Yeah. Even, I mean, John 15, 5 states it pretty clearly, right? Apart from him, you can't do nothing. Yeah. You can't do nothing. And a lot of times, that's exactly what we've gotten because we've been apart from him. Now, you combine all of your wisdom and all of your interference and all of your understanding with the lack, I said the lack, of godly guidance during some challenging moments in our lives. More times than not, it's left your life in total, total turmoil. Total turmoil. Not, not partial. Yeah. Just total turmoil. Y'all been there before? Yeah. Nope. Well, guess what? Today, I want you, like Pastor Thompson, to be excited yeah. because I want you to understand that no matter how much of a wreck your life is in, and no matter how many mistakes you may have made in the past, yeah. and no matter how hopeless your present situation may seem to you, you can still walk away from the wreck and fulfill your purpose. All right. All right. Somebody, anybody, just turn to your neighbor. Matter of fact, everybody turn to your neighbor and say, Today, Today I'm walking away, I'm walking away from, my wreck. from my wreck. Now, 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 turn to your other neighbor on the other side of you, and, and this time say it like you mean it. Today, Today I'm walking away, I'm walking away from, my wreck. from my wreck. Amen, amen, amen. I'm walking away from my wreck. So, so, so in the 27th chapter in the book of Acts, we discover the details of the Apostle Paul's journey to Rome as a prisoner to stand trial before Caesar. Now, during the entire journey overseas, there were a lot of things that happened that ultimately occurred to cause the craft to become shipwrecked. They were traveling from point A to point B. There was a purpose of their journey, but along the way, they did some things that were unwise and it caused the ship to become shipwrecked. Now, it wasn't the intent at the beginning of the journey to crash the ship. Right. That's not what the purpose of the journey was, but because of some of the choices that were made in the process, they found themselves in harm's way and um, the ship was wrecked. Has anybody here ever been involved in a car accident? Yes. <laughs> when you got in the car that day and you turned the key and adjusted your mirror and you put your seatbelt on, was it in your, your intention to go and say, I'm about to crash this thing? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That wasn't your intention yes. at all, but nevertheless, it happened, right? Yes. And I know most of you like me, I done crashed up a lot of cars. Yes, you I done, uh, 
Praise God. Yes, you have. I didn't pass up a lot of cards. Thank you for yeah, that, that, at least I got an amen. At least I know y'all listening. Praise, praise the Jesus. All right. All right. Well, praise God. Um, I didn't crash up a lot of cars. And um even though I messed up a lot of cars, I was always grateful that I was able to walk away yes. from the wreck. Yes. I was upset because I messed up my car yes. and I lost my wheels. And if anybody, I'm a car person, yes. you know, I might have had rims on that thing, might have had speakers, mm -hmm. radio, all that. Might have just been a nice car, right. you know, name brand car. I was like, I was you know, so for that moment, you know, oh, mm -hmm. but, you know, the reality is like, I survived. That's so right. I'm grateful because I was able to leave those wrecks in one piece because the truth of the matter is people get crippled yeah. 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 in wrecks. Right. Yeah. Yeah. People can be dismembered That's right. in wrecks. Yeah. Yeah. Some people mentally never, I don't want to drive again. Yeah. They mentally never recover from a wreck. Amen. Some people even die yeah. in wrecks. Amen. Most importantly, even though I may have lost the vehicle, Amen. Whatever I had set out to do, I was still able to complete yeah. after the wreck. I was able to walk away from the wreck yeah. physically. Y'all yeah. with me so far? Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Let me let me let me throw some scripture at y'all so y'all so y'all know that I read the word and I'm just not talking out the side of my neck. Um, 27 verse 21 through 25. So, and I'm going to get to the point where Paul starts talking to the people on the craft after they are stuck in the middle of a bad situation. So verse 21 reads, after they had gone a long time without food in the middle of their turmoil, Paul stood up before them and he said, men, you should have taken my advice not to sell from Crete. Yeah. Then you would have spared yourselves this damage and loss. But now I urge you to keep up your courage because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night, an angel of the God to whom I belong to and whom I serve stood beside me and said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar. And God has graciously given you the lives of all hmm, who sail with you. That's another message. So keep up, the, keep up your courage, man. For I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told yeah. me. Amen. Walk away from your wreck. Listen, listen to this. So Paul had previously warned them that a wreck was going to happen, that it was unwise to sell at this time. And now you see Paul talking to them in the middle of the process and telling them, that the wreck is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Y'all with me so far? Yes. Have you ever had somebody try to warn you yes. that yes. your choices yes. and your decisions yes. are not going to end well for you? Yes. And you chose to not to listen to them. Yes. And you chose uh -huh. to do it your own way. Yes. Because look, Paul was an apostle. Paul was a teacher. Paul was not a sailor. Right. Paul was not a man of the sea. He was a man of God. But Paul had wisdom and Paul could hear a voice that they were not accustomed to hearing. And Paul, Paul, they may have been sailors on the sea, but Paul was a servant of the God of the sea. Yeah. They may have understood nautical terms, but God, Paul was a man who understood Understood the God of the winds and the God of the earth. So Paul was coming from a different um, vantage point. He was point. He was getting his information from a different source. He wasn't just looking at maps and he wasn't looking at the farmer's almanac. He wasn't just trying to figure on that because he has a different source Amen. that he was tapped into. Amen. And the people chose to go with their own intelligence. They chose to go with their own experience. They chose mm -hmm. to trust and rely in their own abilities, not this Bible-pushing fellow yeah. who was a prisoner anyway. Right, right. You know so much. How come you arrested right now? All right, all right. <laughs> yeah. And it was because of their disobedience Amen. that they found themselves in harm's way, just as they had been warned. 
Yeah. Amen. I want, I want to kind of talk to y'all a bit because I, I know I know we all smart. I know we, we 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 all know pretty much how we got into the mess that we have found ourselves in at times. But just to be clear, disobedience mm. can cause yes, a shipwreck. Yes. <laughs> disobedience Amen. can cause a, dis, a a shipwreck. And if we're honest, many of the disappointments Amen. we experience in our lives is because of our own disobedience. Amen. If you're honest. Amen. Amen. If you don't, if you stop blame shifting, if you stop taking the victim seat, if you stop looking at everything that everybody else did wrong right. and start to do some introspection Amen. and start to be like somebody, so and so, if you swallow your pride sometimes, like if I would just listen, right. if I would have just did what I was told, I wouldn't be in this situation Amen. right now. So often we find ourselves at the short end of the stick because we failed to heed a simple warning. Amen. We failed to heed. A simple warning. Galatians 6, 7 tells us not to be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever a man sows, that shall he reap. Amen. If you reap, if you sow disobedience, yeah. you know, we all, we talk about the fruits of the spirit yeah. all the time, you know, and the fruits of the spirit become come as byproducts of us being obedient. Yeah. And uh, I was listening to Jake's this morning, and he, and when I was shoveling the snow, and um, I was listening to Jake's, gotta get motivated out there, but uh, I was listening to Jake's this morning, and what he said is that when your spirit, because man is a trichotomy, Amen. flesh, soul, and spirit, Amen. when your spirit marries oh with my. the Holy Spirit, All right. consummates Amen. with the Holy Spirit, the offspring of that consummation yes. is fruit of the spirit. Yes. Yeah, okay. Jake's about good this morning. You gotta give your credit, Jake. I know you be watching me on YouTube though, Jake. So. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, but uh, but 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 man, and, but but when you think about that, so when your human spirit starts consummating with unclean spirits, right. what kind of fruit you think you're producing? Yeah. Well, we ain't gonna talk about that. That wasn't Jake's. That was all. That was all Thompson. That was all Thompson. But you, but but some of that disappointment in your life, Amen. some of that frustration in your life, Amen. some of that anger in your life, it is because your human spirit is bonding with unclean spirits. You Amen. you're bonded with deception. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's too yeah. much teaching. Amen. That's, that's too much. And, and 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 when you start bonding with those unclean spirits, the end result is going to be a wreck. Amen. God is not mocked whatsoever Amen. man soweth. So shall he reap. Mm. But even though, like the apostle told the people on the ship, that the wreck was coming. Amen. The wreck did not abort Amen. God's plan. Right. All right. Did, did, did y'all hear that? Amen. The wreck didn't abort God's plan. Yeah. He told them, he said, um, make sure I read it right. Um, because Paul was on the ship. He said, I still got to go see Caesar. Yeah. So because I'm with y'all, right. God, y'all found favor in God because of who I am. And my relationship with God. Y'all going to live because y'all rolling with the man with the favor. So even though they were disobedient and the ship was going to be wrecked, God's purpose and God's plan still had to come forth. And when he said that, they begin to listen to him. They begin to do as he said, not beforehand, but afterward, they begin to listen to him. So watch this, watch this. So, obeying God after being disobedient, mm -hmm. mm. obeying God after being disobedient does not cancel the crash. Praise Ooh. God, right. praise God. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Y'all heard that? Amen. Because they still wound up. They started listening to Paul, but they still wound up wrecking the ship. Amen. I want you to understand that when you start to obey, that don't cancel the crash. Right. Mm -hmm. You still won't crash because God has to be true to his word. You still yes, have to reap right. what you have sown. Yes. Right, right. God can't go back on his word. But what the obedience does before the, the harvest comes or the crash comes is the obedience operate um the obedience activates okay. 
the airbag. The airbag. Amen. The Amen. obedience, so when you crash, mm. you don't feel the full brunt Amen. of the impact. Right. You, 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 you understand? Yeah. The, the, the obedience is what activates the grace. Yeah. The obedience is what activates the mercy. You still gonna crash. Yeah. Right. You still gonna be like, right. Right. this is because I lied. Ah. This is because I stole. Right. This is because I was disobedient. But at least you have some grace and some mercy that can be applied to the situation so you don't feel the full impact of the crash. Yeah. Amen. So I gotta point this out. Verse 27 says, So they listened to Paul. Amen. They ate, they became encouraged, still in the storm, and then they discarded the remaining grain. They have been throwing stuff over the side All right. of the ship the entire time so that they could try to keep some level of control right. over the ship. This is important because before they crash, whoo, before they crash, <laughs> they had yes. lost yeah. all the valuables yeah. on the journey. <laughs> Jesus. Like, like, like a lot of, ooh, man, before they crash, everything that they valued was gone. Yeah. Everything is but, but, like, and, and, but, but when they got to the point where they started to obey, there was a type of repentance that took place. They admitted they were wrong. Right. They admitted they should have listened, okay. and now they begin to do what they should have did all alone. Yeah. So, obeying God after being disobedient doesn't cancel the crash, but it activates the airbag. And you have to understand that repentance will spare your soul, Amen. not your stuff. That's yeah. right. yeah. Amen. See, if you only repenting to save your stuff, you because <laughs> no, 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 no. the stuff was gone before you crashed. Right. <laughs> like the like repentant ain't gonna make the stuff that you already lost come back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, listen, listen, listen. We, we, we get churchy, you know, yeah, God will restore everything that the canker worm took, and I went to the enemy's yeah. camp and I took back all of these stuff. We're gonna get a double for my yeah, 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 yeah. But you're gonna lose yeah. because of your disobedience. Yeah. Right. You are definitely going to use, but your soul that's right. will be spent. Not your stuff. Yeah. Don't you listen? Don't you listen? That stuff already lost. Yeah. That stuff they hadn't crashed yet, mm. but the stuff had been lost. Mm. It isn't until you repent will you be ready to recover from the wreck. I like this because they were preparing to recover from the wreck before the wreck happened. Yeah. Like, did you ever, like? Do you not ever see your life spiraling out of control and you don't have the common sense to be like, oh, this is a bad idea? Like, see, some of us, do we just have to crash? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When we were at refuge for the parish, you know, we had Deacon Carr. <laughs> and Deacon Carr <laughs> would always say, some people just got to get hit upside the head with a brick. <laughs> a big old brick. Like, but, like they cut, and, until they change. And, and, but why does that have to be us? Yeah. Why do we have to crash and lose everything before we get it right? That's not God's will for us. That's not God's will for us. But even after you experience the wreck, you hit the bottom, you still got to walk away from it. Amen. So we see how we get into the wreck, but the problem is we don't want to stay at the wreck site. So. Really briefly, I'm going to give you three points to help you walk away from this wreck. And then we're going to be done. Amen? Amen? So, the first thing that we need to do to walk away from the wreck is you got to realize you've been in the wreck. Mm -hmm. You got to realize you've been, I know that sounds kind of silly, don't it? That guy that sounds kind of silly. But, um, have you, um, so, Sometimes, and I'm, I'm going to use the car because it's something that we can all relate to. So, sometimes when people are in a car accident, the impact is so violent right, yeah. that they can become concussed right. and disillusioned yes. and have no idea what happened. Yeah. And they'll be just walking around in the daze like, right. yeah. what happened? Right. That, and, and, and they don't even realize, they don't even realize the, the gravity of what they're dealing with. Exactly. And a lot of times that happens to us. 
we have something that happens. And listen, a lot of these wrecks are self-inflicted. I don't want you to miss, I don't want that to be missed. But sometimes we find ourselves, this is, this is good for anybody. Sometimes you find yourself in a wreck that you didn't cause, that you had no power, but it's such an impactful event in your life that you can't, you can't get away from it. You may have lost somebody you love. Someone that was your everything all your life, and then when they were gone, you just were not able to. Rec- and you and you walk around in a daze, like I can't believe they're gone. I can't believe they're gone. You're still living, but you don't even realize. Guess what? You're stuck at the wreck site. Yeah. You can't leave that moment in your life, and you don't realize that you're stuck there. Yeah. It happens to the best of us, but you, and you will never be able to walk away from a place that you don't realize you're stuck at and you forget about everything else that you were supposed to do, everything else that you were called to do, you're stuck at the place of that wreck. Yeah. And what you have to do is you have to take an honest assessment of where you are because evidence of a wreck is always apparent. Yeah. It's, all, and it's always apparent to everyone else around you. Sometimes you may not see it, but it's always apparent. We were on, on the way to church today. Looked over. Coming across on um, the road. I can't remember the name. <laughs> the street. <laughs> Took any creek. Uh, oh, yeah. or, or, um, coming up Stetton when it changes. Oh, well, it changed, well it's, it's not Stetton. Adams. Yeah, Adams when it changes to Godfrey. And um, coming down that little curve, black car. Front fender all ripped up. It was apparent that there had been a wreck. Yeah. There's always evidence of a wreck. This shit that we're talking about. When 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 it when when the, when the ship was getting destroyed, Paul told him, "Listen, if you gotta grab onto the boards or or parts of the boat, you yeah. use them as flotation devices. Yeah. Whatever you gotta do to get to the shore, and that what that's what happened. And when the boat pieces began to wash up on the shore, it was apparent that there was uh-huh. a wreck. There is always evidence." When something went wrong, if a house catches on fire, there is evidence right. something right. went wrong. If you go to the doctors and they look at your body and there's something, there's evidence of sickness, there's evidence of disease. When you, if, if you had to, if you had experience, I, I'm, I, I, just got, I just got to talk about it. If you had to experience a bad breakup in a relationship, right. there's evidence. Uh-huh. It's apparent. Yeah. Yeah. The man may never get over it. Man may start just being real mean to women. Right. Took me, I loved her, and she just used me and did it. Did. I can't stand blankety blank. Uh, it's all different under the L. Right. Vice versa, a woman, uh-uh, I'm done with men. I'm done with men. There's evidence. Right. Right. Y'all get yeah. it? We don't just wind up that way. There's some evidence. He was hurt in the past. Yeah. So what really happened? Yeah. I'll be right back. But if you don't ever admit that you were in a wreck, you'll never be able to. To walk away from the wreck. Let me let me let me let me talk about this broken vessel thing for a second, because God hit me with it. Paul's purpose was to go to Rome. That was the purpose of the voyage. You may not like this. I didn't like it. But sometimes the broken vessel gets you closer to your purpose. (laughs) Sometimes breathe, everybody. Sometimes. Sometimes the broken vessel gets you closer to your purpose. Yeah. Sometimes you had to be burned by that person to move you from being in the place where that person was holding you and keeping you. Yeah. Sometimes you had, listen, Jesus had to be betrayed by Judas. Right. right. Exactly. Amen. Jesus yeah. had to move him closer to the yeah. cross. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so every time I say the cross, I can just go a completely different direction. Yeah. But you got to understand that God has a divine plan, and God knows how we respond to everything. And even though we don't like the wreck part of it, sometimes yeah. it's necessary to go through and experience the wreck to realize yeah. and see the provincial hand of God. And I'm going to talk yeah. about that in a second. But sometimes some of us won't move until we hit rock bottom. All right. Sometimes All right. some of us won't change our understanding All till right. it's, and, and trust God till God is all we have. See, it took some of us to be sitting in a jail cell until we heard and decided to obey God. Sometimes it took for us to be homeless sleeping on the street until we said, okay, God, I'm, I, this is it. It's cold. I'm hungry. Okay. Sometimes you have to get to the point of a wreck until you, to, for you to recognize God. Yeah. And when you hit rock bottom, you really only have two options. All right. You only have two options. You can choose to stay at the wreck site. All right. Right, right, right. Yeah. Or you can get up. Yeah. Amen. And walk away. Amen. And move forward. 
So you gotta recognize you were in a wreck. Mm -hmm. Amen. Except you were in a wreck. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing we have to do to walk away Amen. from the wreck. Acts 28, verse 1. <laughs> Acts 28, verse 1. Y'all get it in a second. Once safely on shore, All right. we found out <laughs> that the island was called Malta. Amen. I know y'all like, oh, really? That, that's it? Okay. Once safely yeah. on shore, mm. we found out that the island was called Malta. So after you realize that you were in a wreck, the second thing you have to do is you have to locate yourself. Mm. You have to locate yourself. You have to find that you have to take an evaluation and say, all right, where am I? All right. Where am I? They realized Amen. they were on Malta, but they also realized they were in a place yeah. of safety. Oh um if you the car accident thing. Have y'all ever like seen a bad car accident like on a highway or something? Yeah. Amen. What's the first thing they try to do? Get them out of the car. You, they get them out the car. Yeah. Secure the area. Yeah. Safe it all. There's been a wreck. Maybe two, maybe two years ago, I was at the Wawa down the street from my house, and there was a lightning storm. And um, lightning struck the transformer across the street. It's a big flash, and it exploded. And a car crashed into the light pole. And the guy got out the car, and he was dazed. He couldn't see because of the lightning flash and the explosion. But he, knew he, he got out the car, and he was walking in the street. He was at the wreck site, but he wasn't at a place of safety yet. Right. Yeah. And people were running over him like, yo, man, stay still. He's like, huh, what? He walking out. And, and so there's no lights. All the power's out. So no one can see anything except for the cars coming with headlights. So but someone grabs him. It wasn't me. I wasn't a hero that day. But it wasn't Ooh. me. I was paying my coffee. But <laughs> I, was, I was taping it on my phone. So you know, no, that wasn't me either. But the, the point is, somebody, like, like, like he needs needed to get to a place of safety. Right, wreck occurred yeah. at the wreck site, mm -hmm. but he needed to be stabilized. So the second thing you need to do after you realize you were in a wreck is you need to get to a place of stability Amen. and safety. Amen. And safety is defined as a freedom from the occurrence, a freedom from the occurrence of risk or injury. Amen. You could be at a, I mean, because because if you sit in the car that you just crashed, what if that car catches on fire? Amen. Not in a good spot. What if you stay in the middle of the highway, the car still flying by, trying to navigate around? You know, ain't nobody really stopping. They trying to keep on doing what they're doing. They cussing at you on the way, like, you know, I mean, you crashed the car. I gotta get to work. You gotta get to a place of safety in your life. So, what does that look like when you're experiencing a wreck in your life? Amen. Do are you still Hmm. 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 Are you still hanging around All right. the wreckage? Yes. 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 Or are you moving to a place that you can stabilize yourself? Oh man, I don't want to use this example. Holy Spirit, really? really? Be obedient. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Any of y'all used to watch Gilligan's Island? Yeah. And see, that's exactly why I knew you was going to be like, you watch it though. <laughs> I didn't want to date myself. <laughs> that's what he's like. So, you know, there was a wreck, right? Mm -hmm. Boat shipwreck, right? Yeah. But they didn't stay at the wreck site. Mm. They went into the island mm. and they stabilized themselves so that they could endure and live right. as long as they needed, needed to. But some of us don't do that. Amen. Some of us stay at the wreck site. I don't know why we stay at the wreck site sometimes. Like in the text, we like like I can understand why people think that maybe some of that stuff we threw overboard or wash up on shore. Mm -hmm. Like like like, like wow. some, maybe some people are looking through the rubble All right. to see yeah. what they can salvage wow. from the wreck site. Watch wow. it. So so you were in a wreck because of a relationship. Why are you staying at the wreck site? Because when the relationship finally comes to a head, mm. everything that could have been salvaged has yeah. long been thrown overboard. Right. <laughs> Why are you still hanging at 
the trap house. All right. All right. There's that because anything that could have been salvaged has long been but, but before you got to the point where you then got robbed and you laid out by all, all the drug dealers and you just unconscious about a second away from overdose. Anything that could have that's long been lost. Yeah. But you still let the Come on. Sean always says, he uses this analogy when we talk to people who are dealing with um, recovery and addiction. You keep hanging around the barbershop. You get a haircut. Eventually you get a haircut. Right. <laughs> Why are you hanging around the crash site? Right, right, right. right. Um, I ain't got no business going to the gentleman's club. Right. Uh-huh. Right. I, ain't got no, I, I, I had to pick somebody up when I was left Uber the other day from the right. gentleman's club. I was uncomfortable. <laughs> I was like, I hope I see my car. I was glad a man walked out and jumped out. I was like, I was like, you work here? He's like, yeah, gee, let me tell you. No, don't tell me nothing about your job. Yeah. <laughs> we can get to the point B real quick. <laughs> no, 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 seriously, because the gentleman's right, right, club right. used to be a wreck site for me. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. The gentleman's club used to be a wreck site for me. Right. And guess what? When I left the wreck site, I wasn't getting that money back. Yep. Oh, that was long. Yeah. <laughs> that was long gone. Oh, that's 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 too that's too real. That's all. But, but think about that. Are you still hanging with the type of people that crashed you? All right. Yeah. Are you still doing the same situations that cause you to crash over and over and over? I told y'all I crashed a lot of cars, but guess what? I never crashed a car the same way twice. I may, I may have crashed in the rain. I, I may have crashed because I didn't check my blind spot. I may have crashed because I was driving in reverse and didn't check where I was going. But I never crashed the same way twice. It, it, you, you're going you to experience some wrecks. But if you experience the same wreck over and over and over again, there's a problem. It ain't the car. It ain't the other people. It ain't the traffic. It ain't the weather. It ain't the elements. It's the driver. That's right. Why are you hanging around the wreck site? You need to get away from that place and get some stability. Amen. Amen. I remember the first time I crashed the car down at school and I came back home and my stepdad he said um, <laughs> we were we were, we were in Morrisville and he stopped on the other side of probably the smallest bridge <laughs> in the world it's two-way traffic he goes from Morrisville into Trenton and he got out of his Explorer his Eddie Bauer edition Explorer leather not nice truck and he's like drive I was like really you want me to drive this big old truck across this little old bridge and it's the first time I had drove since I was in Iraq. Mm -hmm. But he had confidence in me, he believed in me, and when he, and, he, when he, and his belief in me made me feel safe. Yes. It was valid, yes. it was a good, and, and, and what I want you to understand is you can't be safe with unsafe people. You can't be safe with people who put you at risk or put you in danger. You gotta walk away and you have to locate yourself. And find yourself a place of safety if you're going to be able to really walk away from the wreck site and don't return to that wreck site. Yeah. The last part, and this is the part of the story everybody really sees. You got to realize you've been in a wreck, locate yourself, and relocate yourself. And you must recognize. Who was with you in the storm? Who was with you in the storm? Yeah. You got to recognize who was with you in the storm. Um, Paul was with him for the whole journey. He was with them the whole journey. They didn't recognize who he was when he warned them. They didn't recognize who he was when he took control of the situation on the boat. Uh -huh. But it wasn't until Acts 28, verse 3 through 6, that they really recognized who Paul was. Acts 28. Verse 3. Paul gathered a pile of brushwood and as he put it on the fire, a viper driven out by the heat fastened itself to his hand. When the islanders saw the snake hanging from his hand, they said to each other, this man must be a murderer. <laughs> For though he escaped from the sea, the goddess of justice has not allowed him to live. But Paul, 
shook the snake off into the fire and suffered no ill effects. Watch this. The people expected him to swell up or suddenly fall dead. But after waiting a long time and seeing nothing unusual happen to him, they changed their minds and said he was a god. Like they did not recognize who they were traveling with uh -huh. the whole time. Now Paul wasn't a god, but the but the purpose of God was on Paul. Yeah. Paul wasn't a god, but the mission and the mandate and the mantle yes. of God was yes. on right. Paul. They didn't recognize that they were traveling with the man of God. Uh -huh. They just thought he was some kind of person. And so you got to understand that even though you experience a wreck, that God was with you in the storm. Yeah. That God had a call and a purpose on your life. He knew the storm was coming. He may have known that you got hurt because somebody wouldn't listen to you or they didn't consider you or they walked all over you. They took advantage of you yeah. and the wreck ensued because you got in your feelings and you made some bad choices based on what they did to you because the flesh had a season where it overwhelmed your spirit. And God knew it because he knew us. He knows us. Yes. He knows every hair on our head. Yes. He knows how we are formed, how we are shaped. He knows our purpose. He created us to bring us to an expected end. And guess what? That expected end includes the wreck. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Wow. You who have to you, you, you have to acknowledge who is with you uh -huh. in the storm and continue to acknowledge him to walk away from the wreck. Amen. Proverbs 3 verse 6 in the New International Version says, In all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. If you acknowledge him in all your ways, Amen. you can walk away from the wreck and he will show you the direction to travel to get to your purpose. Psalm 37 verse 23 reads in the King James Version, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighted in his way. Again, when you acknowledge God, he will order your steps away from the wreck and into the ways that delight him. Galatians 5 16 in the King James reads, this I say, walk in the spirit Amen. and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You cannot walk away from the wreck unless you walk with Jesus. Yes. You cannot walk away from the wreck unless you walk with Jesus. You may want to take your friends with you and they, they can follow you, but you better let God lead you. Yes. You got to walk with Jesus. Yes. You have to be determined in your heart to walk with Jesus. Listen, listen, listen. With God, nations walked through the Red Sea because they chose to walk with God. With God, Peter walked on water because he chose to walk with God. With God, the Hebrew boys walked in the fiery furnace with the Son of God. With God, we can walk on serpents. With God, we can walk on scorpions. With God, we can walk through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil. With God, God, if we can walk in all of those places, surely we can walk away from the wreck. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Surely we can walk away from the wreck. All right. Amen. Hey. Amen. You've been trying to walk away from the wreck, but you've been walking with the wrong people. Amen. Amen. You've been trying to walk away from the wreck, yeah. but you've been trying to carry the wreck with you. Right. You've been trying to walk yeah. away from the wreck, trying to salvage old wisdom, trying to keep old ways, trying to yeah. keep old habits, trying to keep old yeah. values. Leave that stuff in the Dead Sea and yeah. walk into the fullness yeah. of life with God. Yeah. He has greater waiting for you away from the wreck site. Yeah. Amen. Walk away from it. I know it ain't easy because some of the people... Mm. That the wreck represents. Mm. You love them. Yeah. 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 Some of the things that you have to walk away from, you invested a whole lot into. Yeah. All right. Hey. But I want you to understand that God has greater. Amen. God has a purpose. Yeah. He has a place that He desires for Amen. you to get to that you can't take the wreck with you to. Yeah. You can't yes. take it. Amen. Walk away from the wreck. I don't know who's struggling with their past. Amen. I don't know who's stuck in the trap of guilt and the trap of shame and the trap of disappointment that is just constantly 
dogging them. Yeah. All right. Constantly tell them you have messed up your life. You've done too much to ever recover from. You ain't never going to be because you did this. They can't really love you. They don't really care about you. It's only a matter of time before all the same thing that happened to you before is going to happen to you again. Let me tell you, with Jesus, you can walk away from all of that. Amen. Hey, with Jesus, you can walk away from all of that. The Bible tells me, therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. The Bible tells me, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, yes. all things become new. You have to understand that with Jesus leading and guiding you in all truth and righteousness, you all that stuff that you think you lost, all that stuff that you sacrificed, all of that stuff that you wasted your time and your talent and your treasure on, it becomes meaningless at the yeah. end of the day. When you realize, hey, that yeah. God's purpose is the only thing that really matters, all that that stuff becomes fodder. Yeah. It may not seem like it because we place such a high value on things. All right. Man, the wreck you're gonna lose the stuff, but your soul is the only thing that's going to last for eternity. Right. That's right. And God will restore. Amen. And God, God will give you the desires of your heart. Y'all know me, Matthew 6 33, all day long. When you seek God first and all of his righteousness, all Amen. the other stuff, all the other stuff. Sister, Amen. Amen. Sister Ratana said the same thing when she was exhorting today. All of the other stuff, yes. all the, everything that you desire, the, the, the stuff that's in the sea is lost. Amen. But God has greater stuff. Let me tell you something. There is nothing in the sea that can, that, that can amount or even compare to what God has coming out of the window. Yes. yes. <laughs> like, the, like, like the stuff that the, that, that the enemy tries to hold against you That you hold on to Man there's an open window The windows of heaven are open the fire, I don't know what I'm talking about But th th there's nothing that can compare to what God has for you In the place of favor In the place of obedience In the place of his divine will It can't compare Everything that you have accomplished Everything that you have gained Everything that you have obtained Because of your own ability It can't hold a candle To what God did It's nothing Amen. It can't compare. Praise Amen. God. Praise Amen. God. Walk with Jesus. Amen. Walk away from yes. the wreck. Yes. Walk away from the wreck. Amen. Like I said, I don't know who's been dealing, who's, who, who may just realize today that they've been stuck at a wreck site. Amen. And that's okay. It's better that you figure out now than you never Amen. recognize it.